very definition of nerd, meaning he doesn't have a single athletic bone or muscle or tendon in his body. He's a walking brain, but he plays basketball with us almost every week. He just runs around aimlessly, throws a ball up high in the air on the rare occasions that he gets it, and fouls like a motherfucker, scratching and slapping people in his clumsy attempt to get at the ball. And he has glasses, really, really big ones, like the kind he'd use in skeet shooting. No matter how much he sucks, he just loves basketball. He loves watching it, doing it, dreaming it, eating it, shitting it. He practices almost every day and plays every opportunity he gets. And it's paying off. You can see it in the way he moves on the court, how he squares up to a person he's guarding, how he doesn't bite at every little head fake like he used to, how he doesn't shoot like a little girl anymore. Not to say that he's any good now, he still sucks ass, but he has noticeably improved and he gets great pleasure out of not just playing the game but also in improving and learning to play. What I described mirrors my experience with Team Fortress 2. I've been playing computer games for a very long time, but I blow dogs. Keeping a crosshair on a moving target presents quite a challenge for me. Naturally, because I suck ass and I'm a shy little boy, I haven't played that many multiplayer games. I love Doom and Quake, but I didn't care for, nor did I feel brave enough to venture into, the multiplayer portion of the games. It wasn't until Quake 3 that I tried multiplayer, and even then I quickly quit after I got my ass handed to me by railgun wielding jerks. I've played other multiplayer games thereafter, mainly Unreal Tournament and its wonderful 2004 edition, but for the most part I've shied away from them because, for some strange reason, I found being with toilet paper in other people's ass wiping not all that fun. And that's generally true of most things. If you suck at something, that something is going to be a whole lot of fun for you. There are a few exceptions to this rule, mainly sex. Even if you have a 2.5 inch penis and the stamina of a 500 pounds chain smoking geezer, you're sure to enjoy the experience, though your partner may not be able to tell the difference between your penis penetrating her holiest of holes and it merely humping her ass cheeks. That's me in Team Fortress 2, a 2.5 inch penis trying desperately to stick it in wherever possible, making very little dent in the outcome of the game, dying prematurely, but hell if I'm not jizzing all over the place. I started off as a medic, trying to learn the ropes. Even with Antisocial Fat Man, the self-proclaimed best heavy ever, by my side, I died, and died often. There was one time when we managed to pick up the intel going up the spiral stairs, and upon reaching the top we were met by heavy resistance. I had Uber ready to be deployed, and he dropped the intel. Except I didn't know why the hell he dropped the intel. My gut instinct, and I have the instinct of a hotel heiress lost in the Amazon jungles, told me that he wanted me, the medic, the faster runner of the two, to pick up the intel, make a run for it, and try and escape while he created a diversion. So I did. Of course, I was immediately blown up, the fat man soon thereafter, and it resulted in an epic fail. But I learned a valuable lesson that day. In those instances, you drop the intel, deploy the uber, and kill everything and anything that moves. And that's where the game is at its most brilliant, and has its lasting appeal, at least for me. I'm learning to play the game, and there's a lot to learn. One of the most brilliant aspects of a game is that there are class limitations, especially in the types of weapons each class can wield. In games like Quake 3 and Unreal Tournament 2004, you can run around picking up all the weapons available to all players, and depending on the situation, you pull out the appropriate weapon to make the kill. If a player is far away, shooting slow-moving rockets or spraying shotgun shells isn't going to get the job done. With most games, all you need to do is switch to your sniper rifle or machine gun and voila, problem solved but Team Fortress 2 makes no such compromises. You're a demolition man and a pyro is on your ass. What do you do? A nice shotgun would be great at that point. Tough. All you're getting is a sticky bomb, a pipe bomb that'll do you as much damage as a wolver pyro, and some booze. Deal with it. But that's where precisely the game is at its best. I remember the first time I tried to play as a soldier and thinking, this is quite simply the dumbest class. You shoot, and a rocket nonchalantly saunters its way in an impossibly straight line towards the point at which you aimed your crosshair. Of course, by the time the rocket gets there, your target has moved on. To Alaska! Don't like the rocket launcher? Use this shotgun instead with its incredibly widespread so that anything out of your arm's reach will receive the equivalent of a nasty spanking. Don't like either of those? Use a shovel to melee them to death. Of course, you'll die before you actually reach anyone because you're as slow as shit moving through someone suffering from constipation. But you learn little tricks that help you as you continue playing each character. You learn to anticipate people's movements and, instead of aiming directly at their bodies, you learn to shoot at their feet, launching them sky high and rendering them helpless to avoid a second rocket. You learn to use choke points and corners to your advantage, allowing you to spam enemies to death. 
You learn to rocket jump and get to otherwise impossible to reach areas and give yourself uh, advantage of higher ground. You learn to shoot successive rockets in such a way as to make it near impossible for the opponent to dodge every one of them and avoid suffering at least some splash damage. And not only will you learn class specific tricks, you learn general tactics as you learn the maps and habits and quirks of opposing players. And this learning process and the joys of discovery and getting better and better may apply to all multiplayers, but I firmly believe it's nowhere near as true to other games as it is to Team Fortress 2. You can't be competitive in most games if you lack the fine motor skills that all the top players possess. Can't move your mouse precisely enough to get that cursor to point at your opponent's head before he can his? You're in for a long night. In most other games, the speed at which you're able to point at an opponent's head is the single largest determining factor in how you fare. And that aspect is important in Team Fortress 2 as well, but the game is designed so that you can overcome your retardation by using tactics and tricks you learn with experience. Some of this type of design is blatant, like the exclusion of headshots from most classes and the inclusion of random critical hits. But others are more subtly weaved into the game, like the class limitation of weapons available to you and in the design of the maps. Most importantly, the game is designed in such a way to give advantage to those that work together with others. Sure, you can ramble your way to the top of a leaderboard by racking up kills after kills, but a person who sacrifices for a team is oftentimes far more valuable and ultimately a better player than the King of Deathmatch. If you're a slow moving soldier and you have an intel, and there's a scout behind you coming up as viral with you, the better player isn't the one that emerges out of the stairs and tries to get the intel out all by himself. The better player is the one that drops the intelligence, goes out ahead of a scout and offers himself as cannon fodder, allowing for the scout to grab the intelligence and sneak out of a base through the grate as you absorb the flak. Valve designed the game with this in mind, and it's evident when you play and experience working with your team to achieve a map's objective. And you can find so many ways to help the team win, that you don't even have to be a gaming wizard or shut in to be a productive player, and certainly there's fun to be had for everyone, no matter your playstyle or ability. I haven't even mentioned the game's humor, it's very very funny, and art, it's very very pretty, and I don't really have time to do that. Okay, I'll do that briefly. There was a point in which Valve was looking to create a realistic looking and realistic playing Team Fortress 2. Many of us have seen screenshots and heard some of the ideas they were going to implement. But at one point they said, fuck it, and they went with a style in both art and gameplay we see in the game now. This may be the single best decision that any developer has made regarding any single game. Better than Infinity War deciding not to set Call of Duty 4 in World War 2, Better than Blizzard deciding against releasing what they deemed mediocre games like the Warcraft Adventure game or Starcraft Ghost. And even better than Bioware's decision to include blue alien lesbo sex in Mass Effect. The humor in Team Fortress 2 is often sublime. Simple things like the heavy yelling out when he shoots incessantly or hearing the pyro say um, anything or seeing the crabs by or seeing someone taunt kill often cause me to laugh out loud. Some of the stats free Sundays were the most fun I've had playing the game, when people are doing dumb shit and generally fucking around. The game's style in terms of gameplay and art as it is now gives the game its flavor. It is the frosting on the cake, the cherry on top, the nipple on the areola. It's what makes Team Fortress 2 so distinct and unique, and probably has players coming back to it again and again, even after hundreds and thousands of hours. On top of that, with Valve, in an unprecedented show of devotion, continuing to update and tweak the game, I can foresee still playing Team Fortress 2 3, 4 years from now. Team Fortress 2 is to games what Peter Luger is to steakhouses. It's a 1947 Chateau Chavez Blanc of wines, Monte Cristo number no. 2 of cigars. It's Joni Mitchell folk singers, but new edition of boy bands. It's Jennifer Connelly's eyebrows, and tits for that matter, Chalice Theron and Monster, the taxi driver of films, is Drunken Master 2 of Kung Fu movies, Tommy Lee of Taekwondo, Iverson's crossover, Sean Kemp's dunks, Barry Sanders' moves, Lawrence Taylor of heavy hitters, Ken Griffey's swing, Jim Edmonds' fielding, Trevor Hoffman's changeup. It's the Maria Ozawa of Cum Guzzlers, Peter North's nuts, Faye Dunaway and Brooke Shields of incest, Jamie Lynn Spears and Bristol Palin of milfs, the Sibian of knee bucklers. It's the cat's pajamas, the bee's knees, the dog's bollocks. Team Fortress 2 is exceptional, it's galvanizing, it's titillating. It's the best game ever. Victory! <laughs>